Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I want to talk about an RTY, Russell's Futures trade here that I uh, looked at this morning. And I wanted to, one thing I want to talk about just for a moment, and I don't know that we've really talked about this before, but, um, you know, we have the multiple time frame dot cloud down here. And I've talked before about turning on this row two and putting a longer term time frame in that, um, just to keep an eye on where, let's say a daily or a weekly trend is. And this row is not used in calculations of the triangles or dots or the alignment of these rows matching the bottom row. So we're short term trading, right? And in the regular time session, um, we're setting up a 30 minute time frame as our anchor trend. And then we've got, you know, the chart time frame is the top dot. And then we've got a three other time frames that are close to it, uh, but below the 30, which is the bottom. And that sets up alignment of our multiple time frame periods, which help us decide which way of the trend uh, we are. The one thing I wanted to point out here is that on the daily, we clearly are still green. It is still an uptrend. And counter trend trades are tending to be choppy. Uh, they're going to move quick and that sort of thing. But the thing I want to point out here is notice how in the overnight trade, and this is often when you're looking at futures charts with the overnight trading period on, we, we're going to have long periods of virtually no price action or really, really tight price action. And what ends up happening when, when that occurs? When you're looking at exponential moving averages or moving averages in general, when you have long time periods of very little price action, all the time frames are going to start looking relatively flat. And when that happens, you're going to have very little price action is suddenly going to slice through and we're going to be below all those flattened and overlaying on each other moving averages. So you can see that in the multiple time frame dot cloud here. We went from all green to all red in basically one or two candles. And that's typically a tip off uh, and something to be aware of that although the alignment here was trend relatively all green and then we switched to from totally uh, bullish to totally bearish it's really a factor of the overnight session and how long we've been in a virtual flat no trend kind of period and for daytime trading um, you can see that we have quickly moved below all those moving averages and we've quickly started out in a bearish uh, sort of manner so the multiple time frame dot cloud is uh, certainly useful, uh, but something to be very aware of, uh, of not fo following this too blindly without looking at what's going on in price action that set up this period where you're going to start trading. Okay, so that being said, the black box breakout indicator uh, is a very valid one, of course, to be looking at any time frame. And what it's doing often is setting up uh, long or short trades depending on where we are directionally to the cloud. So trades below the cloud are going to be shorts and trades above the cloud are going to signal long when we hit some of the conditions that set up the breakout indicator. <clears throat> in this particular case, RTY <clears throat> made the initial push down in the opening session uh, and came down to yesterday's low. That's one of the uh, levels that we give in our uh, trading suite the yesterday's low we did find rejection uh, below that had a pretty good bullish move and I've talked before about reversals uh, at the cloud and often if you're going to have a reversal you'll close above it you'll check back into it find support and then continue back on in the uptrend on the other side if you're coming from below the cloud you close above it or in it uh, but don't find support. You're going to chop around in a little bit uh, and then, you know, you're going to continue that, in this case, bearish price action. Now, this was a valid signal to the long side that we got here. How, however, it didn't trigger. And as soon as we started making closes below the cloud again, we got another short signal. And that was my preferred trade of this setup for today. We're well above the expected move for the day, which is this, and the AT, one ATR for the day, which is this dotted uh, gray dotted line down here so we still have room in the trade from this entry to potential target zones in this particular case um, we made more than 200 percent times risk you know with an entry here you could have taken off 200 percent times risk here or it looks like about 250 percent or so from this entry to this um, uh, 
you know, potential trade management getting out of the trade at this point. Now, I, you know, for me, looking at this trade, I liked it better than, I'll show you why I'm here in a second. Um, this one, I liked it better because we had support with MACD. Now, this red line is the difference between a three period and 10 period simple moving average. And it's showing me some level of momentum for the trade. And you can see as I'm making lower lows here, I'm supporting that with lower lows in MACD. And then we had the strong pullback against this uh, morning downtrend. We found re uh, resistance just slightly above the cloud and then failed again. And you can see we made the, the push down. And then this particular point here you know, was right around this low. Now, if I look at the equivalent for YM, the reason I would not have looked at potentially taking this trade, even though it worked, was that um, you have the initial push down in YM here. Uh, and you can see the MACD down here had a pretty bearish move down. But you can see the second low we made, uh, which was a lower low in price, was a higher low in the MACD. And that's a positive divergence situation. This would be a trade that I would have been more uh, unlike to take or one I wouldn't have liked relative to the R RTY trade. Now it did so happen to work out, right? So this this signal here ended up <clears throat> triggering and we got to about a hundred and yeah, it looks like about 160 percent times risk before that one exhausted and we finally started moving back up through the cloud uh, here. So that's the you know the ability to use different indicators uh, for getting in and out of trades and looking at uh, how to manage trades with YM and RTY. Today, it's April the 15th, tax day in the U.S., 2019. Take care.